Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's fountain pen is the second piston filler I purchased from Hongdian. This is the Hongdian N7 and it seems to have become very popular very quickly. Since I purchased this pen, I've seen it pop up on various Facebook pen groups and in online discussion forums. The first Hongdian piston filler I reviewed was this Hongdian N6, which is a cigar shaped pen with a gold cap. Hongdian has updated this pen by releasing a new N6 that is in all matte black, including the nib, but has a small red ring on the barrel. Plus, the black model has an available Fude nib option in addition to the EF and F nibs. This new N7 is a flat top style pen with a metal cap and a lovely acrylic barrel, and comes in two flavors, this peacock blue with peacock feather motifs, and a gray model that has rabbits and moons. This is a very well-built pen and is very close in size and shape to this very famous pen. And let's take a look at it right now. Some people have been complaining that they don't see me trudging through snow and sleet and wind to get to my mailbox anymore. Trudge through the snow, do you? Okay, well, here I go again. Uh, to pick up my pens, but that's because the pens don't seem to come in the mailbox anymore. This evening, Sunday evening, at 9 o'clock at night, pitch dark, I got a package delivered to my door. And I expected it to come from Canada Post, but it came to my door by courier. So some of these retailers online, like from AliExpress, are sending them to local couriers to be delivered after they get through Canada Customs. Unfortunately, you don't get to see me trudge through the snow. So let's open this up. And where have I seen this before? I think I just reviewed a black froist and uh, with the latest catalog the brand new 2009 duke can't wait for that to come out there we go deep in there come on yay i got it out well that's interesting this is the Hongdian N7. It's part metal and part acrylic. So this acrylic resin here is very chatoyant. And a brass cap and a really interesting pattern engraved into it. And a nice pattern on the top finial as well. Piston filler with an ink window. So we're seeing a lot of, more of these from China. And they're looking very, very interesting. And there's the nib, Hongdian, with that lovely, interesting Palace Pagoda design. And this one is a fine, and we've seen these fine nibs be needle points. But it'll be interesting to see if we can get it off. Nope. I don't want to turn it anymore. I might break it. Let's see if I can pull it. It's in there pretty tight and it posts like a charm it does make it back weighted a bit but this is a very pretty pen it's showing up on camera very much like the color it is it's this emerald green and it looks like a lovely pen the Hongdian N7 so we'll clean this out and ink it up and put it through its paces something to look forward to and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Overall, it is a good size, substantial, flat top style fountain pen that has a similar size and shape to the Pelican M800. Here they are side by side. You can see that the Pelican M800 is just slightly long in the piston knob uh, than the N7. And unposted, you can really see the similarity between the two pens. 
But that's about it because everything else, the weight, the balance, the feel in the hand, and the materials uh, in this pen is very different uh, than the Pelican. First, the Hongdian is about 9 grams heavier. But the N7 is, in my subjective opinion, very attractive indeed with this gorgeous chatoyant turned acrylic barrel and this really nicely engraved powder coated brass cap. Take that with a grain of salt because my opinion on what constitutes beauty has been challenged of late. <gasps> For example, I think this Pen BBS 535 is ugly and the Hongdian N7 is very attractive and some might prefer this Canwright Heritage over the N7. Whatever floats your boot, buddy. I'm sorry, I don't speak Canadian. Let me get someone over here. Mike, we have a Canadian? Oh, no problem, I got it, Heather. Hey, buddy, what seems to be the problem, guy? I'll tell you the problem, friend. I have to get back to South Park to be with my family, guy. Let's look at this N7. From the top, we see a flat finial that is subjectively attractive in a peacock blue and gold stylized peacock feather circular design under the clear acrylic dome. It is surrounded by a gold metal single groove band that holds the gold metal clip to a notch in the cap. The clip is substantial but springy in a subjectively elegant taper. The cap is what looks like a powder coated enamel paint over brass with these subjectively lovely stylized peacock feathers engraved into it which shows the brass underneath the powder coat. There is a full peacock at the bottom rear of the cap and at the top of the cap are the script lettered words peacock in case you didn't already get the design motif and ching huo which translates as clear fire in Chinese or clear internal heat in Chinese medicine. I think it might be Chinese cough syrup. I always thought that the stuff on my sweet and sour chicken balls was cough syrup. BT. Crazy man, call the police. The cap curves up and then is straight to a small gold metal cap band that has LT Hongdian on one side and the model number N7 on the other. There's a small step down to the turned acrylic barrel, which is straight until about here, where it begins to taper slightly. Then we have two gold metal bands, which separate the top of the piston knob from the barrel. And then we have a flat gold metal end finial. The cap unscrews with slightly under one rotation to reveal a thick tapering section of powder coated enamel brass, a large clear acrylic ink window surrounded by single gold bands on each side, and a single grooved gold metal band at the end of the section towards the number six size two-toned steel nib and black plastic feed. The section is girthy and these cap threads, while not sharp, along with the bump uh, from the ring at the end of the ink window, can be felt as substantial ridges uh, depending on where your grip lies. Unfortunately for me, that lands right on my thumb and has left impressions after long writing sessions. I do like the thickness of the grip section though and how the pen feels in my hand. The section does not unscrew from the barrel. Let's take a closer look at this nib. This is the same nib that is on the Hongdian N6, only this one is in fine where my N6 was an extra fine. The nib and feet are not part of an assembly, but are friction fit. And there's a lot of friction here too, folks. You saw that I couldn't budge the nib at all in the unboxing. Well, I soaked it overnight and with some water and a drop of dish soap and was able to pull it off the next day. It was all for naught anyway, as there isn't a number six size nib that will fit this pen. All the other nibs I tried, Kaiglu Long Knife, Pen BBS Calligraphy, Jin Hao, Moon Man, Fully Wen, they all fit in the section, but the cap wouldn't close all the way down and got hung up at the bottom of that. You can probably see where it's scraped at the bottom of that cap. While we're here, we can take a look and it has a black plastic cap liner that doesn't actually really seal the nib. The threads are right there that you can see uh, mesh with the cap threads here and are supposed to seal the nib. However, there was one nib that I was able 
to swap into this pen. And I'll show that when I get to the writing sample. The nib has that wonderful Pagoda Palace on it, an F for fine, and Hongdian. And the inside of the cap also serves another purpose, which is when you want to post the pen, it has a positive click where that cap sits into those threads. Now, I don't know whether that's good or bad in terms of the longevity of those threads, but it certainly makes posting the pen very, very nice. The weight of that cap does back weight the pen slightly, and the pen is plenty long enough and very comfortable in the hand unposted. This is full of ink right now, so I won't turn the piston, but the piston assembly can be removed with a special tool. And as the M6's piston assembly is exactly the same as the M7, I can show you here on this one because it's empty. The piston goes all the way to the top of the ink window. There you see it. And when it's open, this part of the assembly looks like it's metal. It's not. It's plastic with a silver finish on it. But there's a notch there and a notch there. And there is a special tool you can get uh, to disassemble this piston. As I was told by a channel member that the tool is available from the Etsy shop Easy Buy. I'll follow up with that with Sally who owns the Easy Buy store to see if I can get one. But I was able to remove the piston from this pen by continuing to turn the knob after the piston was fully extended at the risk of breaking it actually because if it's too stuck these parts are just plastic so I wouldn't uh, trust that they would uh, not snap on me but I was able to continue turning the mechanism and you can see that it unscrews and that part comes right out the end of the piston is down inside there so I'll use a pair of needle nose pliers to grab that piston and pull it out there's the piston and to put it back in again you just simply put a little grease on it first push the piston back into the barrel put the end of that assembly on the rod and push it in and keep turning until the piston is retracted and the mechanism is seated in the back of the pen now that's not tight now because I don't have the wrench but it shows that you can actually take this apart I bought this pen from Aliexpress for $29.39 and it has since increased to $38.73 as I said in the introduction the pen is available in two colors this peacock blue with the peacock motif and a gray with a rabbit and moon motif the nib options are extra fine and fine steel now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Hongdian N7 piston filler with a Pelican M800 piston filler, a Hongdian N6 piston filler, a Majon T5 piston filler, and a Tianzi piston filler. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The two Hongdians and the Pelican post very, very nicely, where the Majon and the Tianzi become very big. Also, the Tianzi, I don't recommend posting it because what happens is it sticks on the end of that piston knob and you rotate that cap while it's posted and you'll have an inky mess. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. I should mention that the N6 has the Wing Sung 629 14 karat gold nib in it currently. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Hongdian in seven and it has a fine steel number six size nib let's check the wetness as you can see this is very very wet 
for a fine nib. Very nice. The nib is very smooth with just a hint of feedback. And the ink today is Robert Oster. Fire and Ice. I thought this would be a very nice match for this pen, and it is. Here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. As to line variation, well, this is a very stiff nib, and so you can't get much line variation out of it at all. And this nib makes a line that is 0.3 millimeters in thickness, which is a Western extra extra fine or a Japanese extra fine to fine. I expect the EF nib for this will be a real needle point for you fans of tiny writing. I do wish they would make a medium or close to medium, maybe a 0.5 millimeter nib, which is a Western fine, but closer to my style of writing for this pen because this nib is very nice and this pen is very nice. And thicker lines also mean there's more ink on the page and so you'll get better shading and, uh, and shimmering inks will actually be able to take advantage of that as well because uh, an extra extra fine nib doesn't show off much shading at all and virtually no shimmer as it gets all clogged up in that narrow slit. But as I mentioned earlier, although every nib swap I tried failed uh, due to the cap being too short uh, to accommodate the other nibs other than the Hongdian, I remembered I was able to swap the nib on my Hongdian N6 with the 14 karat gold number six size nib uh, from my Wingsung 629 piston filler. So I tried that and it works. So here's the video of a writing sample I did with the Wingsung 629 14 karat gold nib in this pen. Here is the Wingsung 629 piston filler that came with a 14 karat gold number six size nib, but now it has the Hongdian nib in it, or a Hongdian. This is an extra fine, not the one that was in this N7. But I've swapped the 14 karat gold Wingsung nib. There it is. It's a medium. I've swapped it into the N7 and it's a good deal thicker than the fine nib on the Hongdian N7. This is the 14 karat gold Wingsung 629 nib and it is very wet, very smooth and not as springy as you expect for a uh, 14 karat gold nib but the line this nib makes is 0 0.5 millimeters which is a little bit thicker than the one that came in the pen and for our quote and for some reverse writing It's much scratchier, but it actually does it. Very, very dry. And some quick writing. That feed doesn't have any difficulty keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I like almost everything about this pen. So even without swapping it, I like the nib. I like the smooth piston. Without Chris's review, I would not have known how the piston does not retract all the way back in the barrel. But the pen does have an ink capacity of one milliliter, which is okay. Overall, this is just an extremely well-designed, well-built fountain pen. The mixture of acrylic and metal is very nice, 
the pen feels very comfortable in the hand, even posted, even though it's slightly back weighted. But certainly, unposted, the pen is very comfortable and feels similar to my Pelican M800. It is not, by any stretch, a replacement for the M800. The materials in the M800 Pelican are just far superior to all of this pen. Now some might think this peacock version is too gaudy or ostentatious. I think it's pretty. If you don't like this one, you have the option to get the gray rabbit model, which has a stealthy dark gray nib as well. I like the way the pen posts with a click, even though it does back weight the pen slightly. The price on this pen has already risen by $10 US since I bought it. So it looks like this pen is becoming as popular as Hongdian's Black Forest model, which came out last year. I wouldn't be surprised to see Hongdian add their 14 karat gold nib to the N7 in short order. Although I do wish they'd add a medium or even a food A option uh, in the steel first. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month. I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus now I'm providing unboxing videos as I get new pens exclusively for members only. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.